for today's press conference for the event on uh, Friday evening. Um, this event obviously is a little bit different for us. Um, we're featuring Michael Conlon in the main event, um, making his professional debut. The only other Olympians really to turn pro in Madison Square Garden were Evander Holyfield, George Foreman, and Jermaine Taylor. Uh, but this is the first Olympian outside of the United States who is literally the main event of what we hope to be an annual card every St. Patrick's Day weekend uh, here in New York City at the best arena, Madison Square Garden. So Michael Conlon, welcome to America. Uh, amateur hours indeed over on Friday night at about 10 o'clock for you, but thank goodness. Um, <coughs> this event obviously wouldn't be possible or anything else we do here at Madison Square Garden without uh, really the guy who runs the whole place. I'd like to bring him up and say a few words uh, on behalf of the garden and talk about the weekend, Mr. Joel Fisher. Thank you, Carl. Um, welcome everybody today. Um, obviously, we have an incredibly busy boxing week. Um, we're very excited about that. We haven't done something like this before. I've got to tell you that both um, Top Rank and Tom Laughlin on K2 have been tremendously cooperative and worked together. I think it's going to be one of the most exciting boxing weekends that we've ever had. Um, it's incredible. We're very much looking forward to Michael Collins' uh, pro debut. Um, the next night, we obviously have the Golovkin-Jacobs fight, which will also be exciting. Um, we're extremely excited for this fight that will take place in the ring um, right behind us. I am sure this is the first of many, many fights that Michael will fight here, um, eventually and quickly probably moving up to the big arena. Um, it's going to be just an incredible atmosphere on St. Patty's Day. Um, it's just going to be a, a real special night, and I, I suggest to all the boxers that they really take it in because it's going to be a, a, just a tremendous night. I have to thank Top Rank. They're the best in the business. They're tremendous to work with. Bob, Todd, Carl, Brad, Dina, Lee, all of them are just total, total professionals and a pleasure to work with. So, just in, in short, we look forward to seeing a whole sea of Kelly Green here on Friday night. A lot of fans, hopefully, will come back on Saturday night to see a great fight, but Friday night, the debut of Michael Conlon, there'll be nothing like it. We really look forward to it. Thanks a lot for coming today. Thanks. To uh, take us through the rest of the program and introduce you to the fighters, um, a man who needs no introduction whatsoever. He is in his 51st year of promoting fights, and I don't know how, I don't know what fight number this is in Madison Square Garden, but it could be the first St. Patrick's Day one. Uh, Hall of Fame promoter, Mr. Bob Aaron. Thank you, Carl. You know, one thing about the sport of boxing, it regenerates itself. Uh, we have, in the sport, we are blessed uh, to have the fighters of the recent past. Fighters who I remember fighting as if it were yesterday, uh, like Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, Marvin Hagler and George Foreman and Mike Tyson. Uh, and then moving on, uh, guys like uh, Oscar De La Ho Hoya, uh, Francisco Vargas, uh, and others uh, of their era. And now today, uh, we have great champions uh, like uh, uh, Triple G and uh, Gennady Golovkin, uh, Daniel Jacobs, uh, Terence Crawford, and of course, Vasil Lomachenko. Uh, so boxing continues, and this event which we are privileged to hold on St. Patrick's night, uh, this event will feature many of the young fighters who will come to prominence in the years ahead. Uh, not with us today, but uh, uh, he'll be fighting on the card. 
is a young man who was uh, uh, from the United States, who was on the Honduran uh, team in the Olympics. Tremendously fast hands. His record now is 2-0. Diofino Lopez, somebody really special in one of the earlier fights. I want to thank uh, uh, our sponsors for this event, uh, who've really stepped up. Uh, every spot on the ring mat uh, will be taken. First of all, Hennessy, uh, who encourages you to never stop, never settle. Uh, Kidar Capital, uh, Total Splicing Solutions Limited. You see, all three of them are new sponsors who have come in uh, because of the prominence uh, on the card of Michael Conlon, who we'll talk about in a few minutes. When the Olympics ended, we made an effort to go after the best fighters in the Olympics, uh, whether they won medals or didn't win medals, whether they won gold or they won silver, or they were cheated out of getting medals, as a number of fighters were, uh, and uh, uh, allegations were made uh, of a Russian conspiracy, uh, although I thought the Russians were too busy with that hacking into our election. But, uh, but be that as it may, uh, we looked for the best talent. And one of the fighters that caught our attention right away was a fighter from Brazil, which was the home country, uh, and indeed, he was successful in winning a gold medal. Uh, Robson Conciecchio, I, I can never pronounce it, just let's call him Robson. Really, really <coughs> terrific fighter. And he has a real test on Friday night against a young man who is uh, uh, here uh, with us uh, today from Cincinnati, Aaron Hollis. So, Aaron, you're up against an Olympic gold medalist. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Aaron? How y'all doing? I'm not really too worried about him going to the Olympics. That don't scare me. I'm not too worried. Like, as you can see, the back of the jacket says, what? <laughs> too pretty, too slick. I'm gonna be slick. He gotta catch me. I don't think that's gonna happen. So, I came to fight. And I'm gonna show out. I'm gonna give y'all a show. It's gonna be a whole lot of wows and OMG and... <laughs> this guy is nice. I ain't them cab drivers or them bums that stand there and trade punches. I'm coming to work. And you gotta catch me to work. Thank you. You know, Brazil, of course, is so well known for its great soccer players <coughs> and uh, great uh, soccer national team. Uh, but when Robson fought in the Olympics for the championship, it was the highest rated television show uh, of the years, uh, he, there were about 25 million homes in Brazil uh, were on watching uh, his victory, well deserved, I might say, for the gold medal. So I'd like now to bring to the microphone, he's here with his manager, Sergio Badarelli. Please welcome Robson Cancieco. Bom dia a todos. 
Minhas saudações a todos os atletas aqui presentes. E mais uma vez, muito obrigado a Bob Ar e a Top Rank por acreditar em mim e estarem cuidando de minha carreira. Good morning to all. Uh, I want to thank you, Bob Aron, and everybody from Top Rank to taking care of my career. Bom, é, eu fiz uma preparação muito boa, muito intensa para lutar com os melhores adversários do mundo. E houve um imprevisto de última hora que meu adversário não pôde lutar comigo e foi escolhido outro. Porém, eu estou muito bem preparado para lutar com ele. Ok, eu tive um very very nice training camp. I prepare myself to face an opponent. Last minute they changed the opponent, but there is no problem because I'm uh, prepared to face anyone the best fighters in the world. <coughs> Bom, e eu faço isso desde muito pequeno. É, no boxe olímpico eu não escolho com quem eu luto. No profissional assim será. E eu espero lutar com os melhores e surpreender, superar todos. I do boxing since I was very, very little. So in the Olympics, I never can choose opponents. So I don't choose opponent. I will face anyone, and I will be the winner. É, muito obrigado a todos e se preparem que na sexta-feira vocês verão um belo espetáculo em cima do ringue. Thank you to all and be ready on Friday night to you see a great show. Thank you. You know, some young men, particularly in the United States and also in Mexico, uh, don't participate too much in amateur boxing. And when they become of age to fight, they go into the professional ranks right away uh, because, frankly, they need the money. Their families need the money. And uh, so they lose out on the Olympic opportunity. Uh, Alex Sacedo uh, is one of those young men. He comes from Oklahoma City. Uh, his record, 23 wins and no defeats, 14 knockouts. He is a tremendous fighter, uh, which uh, I am very, very happy uh, to showcase uh, here in Madison Square Garden. Uh, we realized uh, that he wasn't uh, uh, making the progress that his talent uh, dictated, and so we uh, convinced uh, he and Louis Mazzarano to send him uh, to Abel Sanchez, who have started training him, and as Alex will tell you, it's been a tremendous improvement. Uh, he's matched uh, uh, really tough. Uh, he will be fighting uh, Johnny Garcia, um, Johnny Garcia uh, a young man who uh, knocked down Jose Ramirez, uh, the phenom from Fresno, who's <laughs> undefeated. Uh, Johnny's record is 19 and 3. He comes from Holland, Michigan. Uh, he's here with his advisor, Butch Hernandez. I like uh, Johnny. Come to the mic, Johnny. Hello. What am I saying, Bob? How you doing? <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me here. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity, you know, to fight uh, an undefeated fighter. Um, here at Madison Square Garden, it means a lot, you know. I've been prepared, I've been training for this fight for a little over two months, so, uh, you know, I'm ready to um, put on a great show. And now uh, I'd like to bring to the microphone uh, Alex Sacedo a real up-and-coming prospect, uh, and uh, he's here, I believe, with his trainer, uh, a guy who is making his mark as one of the great trainers in boxing, Abel Sanchez.
First of all, Bob, let me apologize for being late. The traffic out there is really hectic. Uh, this is my second training camp with Alex. Uh, we realize we're fighting a guy that uh, put uh, the phenom down in his fight, so we're prepared for a difficult fight. Uh, hopefully, Alex will uh, will show the talents that he's uh, he's developing uh, in our gym. We realize that uh, this is a big, big opportunity and a great card, so we hope to put on a great show. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, very excited to be here. It's my first time out in New York. Um, and I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to put on a show. It's been a long nine weeks of training camp. And like we said, uh, we progressed a lot during this uh, long weeks. Um, and I'm ready, I'm ready to come out and show everyone what, what I'm all about. And thanks, thanks for everyone who came out. Thank you guys. And now the feature about the evening. You know, everybody has commented how unusual it is to have uh, a young man in his professional debut uh, fighting a main event uh, in a place uh, as legendary as Madison Square Garden. But Mick Conlon, as we'll talk about, means so much to so many people and can do so much uh, for the sport of boxing. But again, he's got to prove it in the ring and he's got to fight top competition. And so for his profess first professional fight, uh, we brought in a fighter from Denver, Colorado, uh, who uh, has had eight professional fights, uh, is four and four, uh, but is becoming a skilled professional, as will be the fighters that Mick will be fighting. So please welcome Tim Ibarra from Denver. Tim. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you to Bob and Top Rank for having me here. Uh, it's a really, really epic place to fight for sure. Uh, just want to say that uh, we, we're, we're coming not to not to let uh, Conlin, you know, have an easy pro debut. I want to show him that uh, the pros, AP amateurs, uh, trained really hard for this fight. You know, we got to call in January. Been training since. Um, you know, it's going to be a tough fight. I, I really expect a tough fight between both of us. Like I said, it ain't going to be easy. Um, that's, that's it. Thank you, guys. Before the Olympics uh, in Rio, when we were looking at the fighters that we might be interested in, uh, Todd DeBuff, who's the president of Top Rank, kept mentioning this fighter from Ireland, uh, Mick Conlon, who, frankly, I hadn't heard very much of uh, until after the Olympics was over. Uh, and all of us who follow sports and boxing know what happened. The young man who hoped to win an Olympic gold medal uh, was cheated out of it uh, by the politics uh, that's inherent uh, in amateur and Olympic boxing. Uh, and the way he reacted to it uh, really uh, enhanced uh, his reputation uh, and brought a lot of people who might not have been interested in boxing or in him uh, around because People who get screwed over like he did uh, sometimes don't react. Sometimes for the uh, political correctness of sportsmanship, I told to say nothing, but Nick sell, said plenty uh, with his gestures and with uh, his voice. And that needed to be said. And so after we signed him, uh, with the help, help of uh, our good friend Matt Macklin, uh, 
when we decided when his professional debut would be, we decided that it would be on St. Patrick's Day. Why? Because those of you, you know, St. Patrick's Day here is a green line down Fifth Avenue and people drink a lot of beer and so forth. But St. Patrick's Day is celebrated because it commemorates St. Patrick, who he became, chasing, running the snakes <laughs> out of Ireland. And so it is really fitting that Mick fight on St. Patrick's Day because he ran the snakes out of Aiba. <laughs> because after he sounded off, something like 20 or more of them got fired, and a lot of their executives uh, uh, were canned, and hopefully amateur boxing uh, will benefit by that and will, for once, uh, present clean programs. Uh, Mick is here today with his manager, who's known to you all uh, because terrific middleweight fighter, uh, always gave a thousand percent in the ring, a hard guy to beat, won his share of big fights, and he's been a terrific guy to work with. Uh, before I have Mick come up, Let's hear a few words from Matt Mackley. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, everyone, for coming out here today. Uh, I read an article yesterday and uh, I spoke with several boxing journalists, and uh, they were all kind of saying that they haven't seen this level of hype for an amateur making his professional debut since way back in 1992 when Oscar De La Hoya made his anticipated professional debut. <clears throat> you know, in my opinion, widely the best amateur ever to come out of Ireland. He's certainly the most decorated. You know, he, he kind of shot to prominence in 2012, the London Olympics, winning a bronze medal there, and then really went on a clean sweep of gold medals after that in all the major tournaments, Commonwealth Games gold medalist, European Games gold medalist, and getting the best boxer of that tournament. Um, world amateur champion and then really the scene was kind of set that he'd kind of sign off on his stellar amateur career with a gold medal in Rio and obviously it was not to be, he was uh, very very harshly treated, very very bad decision, probably probably the worst decision or certainly most controversial decision since possibly Roy Jones back in 1988 <laughs> but you know every every cloud has a silver lining and maybe the uh, the profile and publicity that came off the back of that I think when he tweeted Vladimir Putin, it got 70,000 retweets, it went viral. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, that was pretty ballsy in itself, just to tweet Putin. But uh, that's what I think everyone uh, admired that about him. But uh, yeah, I think the, uh, the raw emotion, the honesty in that post-fight interview really kind of shot you, you know, really brought his profile through the roof, really, and he, he caught the eye of top rank. And uh, when they reached out in mid-August, by mid-September, you know, we had a, a deal, deal agreed and a contract signed. Um, I think, you know, initially the, there was thoughts that he might make his debut uh, November 5th on the Manny Pacquiao undercard, but I think after, you know, more, more thought was put into it, we realised that, uh, you know, St. Patrick's Day really was the weekend that he should make his pro debut and where else than Madison Square Garden. You know, I think for a long time now, um, Mexican fighters have always been known as the, uh, the best, most passionate fight fans in the world, uh, and as a result, Cinco de Mayo and the Mexican weekend in September have always been the two big, big weekends for you know doing big pay-per-view events as they do. That's where they do the most numbers. But you know, I think for a long time now, Irish fight fans have been a sleeping giant. You know, John Duddy, who very well known here in New York, boxed here at Madison Square Garden many, many times, sold sold loads of tickets. You know, a real kind of fan-friendly style. Andy Lee. Boxed here, always sold well. I myself fought Sergio Martinez here in the theatre for the World Middleweight Championship. And, um, but I think the real, the real guy, the real star, the guy who's really woken up the sleeping giant that is Irish fight fans is Conor McGregor. Not a boxer, he's an MMA guy, but he has really shot to superstar and he's the, probably the biggest star in combat sport. And Conor will be carrying out the Irish flag on mixed ring walk, but I'll let, I'll let Michael tell you how that came about. 
Well, I can say that I've uh, spent many days, many weeks in uh, California with Mick. Watched him train, watched him spar with the likes of Oscar Valdez, Jesse Magdaleno, world <coughs> champions. Um, you know, 16 and old guys, Emilio Sanchez. And you would not believe that this guy was preparing for his pro debut. You would think that he was a fringe contender or someone that was only a few fights away from challenging for a world title. So I'm um, personally really, really excited about his career. And I think everyone in Ireland is. This fight is also being to, uh, shown live in the UK and Ireland on uh, Box Nation. And will be shown delayed on Saturday prime time on RTE, which is terrestrial TV in Ireland. If you think of all the people that will be staying in Saturday with a heavy hangover from St. Patrick's Day, you can imagine the viewing figures will be astounding. So, um, yeah, it's, um, you know, we've, it's been, a, you know, I think September now, we, we, we got the deal done, so six months, which, be, uh, you know, a lot of uh, juggling balls and getting things in place and organizing things, but the, uh, there's been a massive response here in New York, great reaction, everyone's really excited about uh, Friday night, and not just about Friday night, but about, about what's gonna be an unbelievable journey, and when I think, in 10 years from now, when Mick's career is over, and hopefully it's over by then, <laughs> we, we, we go great watching all the, the, the fights, if not by then, but uh, you know, he's, uh, I think he'll go down as probably the, the best Irish fighter of all time, and I think it's gonna be one hell of a journey, and I think Friday night is gonna be an unbelievable night. I think the atmosphere is gonna be absolutely electric, so I'll leave it at that, and I look forward to seeing you all Friday night. You know, I'm from Las Vegas, and in Vegas, they put lines up, betting lines, for everything. So, like, for example, uh, the Super Bowl's over, what, a couple of months? <coughs> and they've already have the lines up for next year's Super Bowl. Uh, you know, one team is 25 to 1 to win, another is 10 to 1, 5 to 1. So there's, a, in this, some race in sports book, there's a line up for the most beer consumed at an athletic event in Las Vegas. And the favorite, early morning favorite, uh, is uh, Mick Conlon's next fight uh, in Las Vegas. And uh, so uh, they're loading up the trucks uh, with beer. Uh, uh, we're gonna bring in, uh, in when he fights in Las Vegas, uh, many, many fans. Irish fans and other fan, other nationalities from all over, uh, but particularly from Ireland. Uh, and uh, Mick is going to see in the United States uh, what uh, large uh, Irish populations, some of them aren't even Irish, but they claim to be, uh, we have in uh, cities not only like New York and Boston, uh, but Los Angeles, San Francisco, and so uh, Mick will be meeting a lot of his uh, compatriots, a lot of the expats, and a lot of the Irish people who came to the United States and made great lives for themselves. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have Mick on this program and really have this program because of Mick Conlon. Uh, we think he will be a great star. Uh, I agreed with Todd and Matthew that we delay his uh, professional debut until St. Patrick's Day uh, because of the symbolism. Uh, but we're not going to waste time. Uh, remember, Sugar Ray Leonard uh, fought for his second world title uh, in June 1980, less than four years after he won a gold medal. The time that is now spent in building up prospects is ridiculous. They should fight more often. And I really believe that by the time his fourth year rolls around from the anniversary date of the Olympiad uh, in Brazil that he will be uh, a world champion and will be one of the most prominent fighters in the sport of boxing. It starts on Friday night. It's going to be a momentous night 
because it is the start. Uh, please welcome one of the great young fighters in the world, uh, Mick Conlon. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you all for coming and turning out. Uh, I've had a long training camp. It's been great. It's felt like it's been forever. I've been signed up with top rank since September, so it's been a long time. This has been like this feels like it's been a long time coming. You know, I'm looking forward to going in there and putting on a performance on Friday night. I know there's a, a lot of hype around it, but listen, I'm going to make you believe the hype. I mean, it's as simple as that. <coughs> Tim, Tim's going to come to fight. You know, he's four and four. He's at a full training camp, and you know, he's a hungry fighter. He, he wants to put bread on his table. And unfortunately for him, on Friday night, I'm going to have to knock him out. It's as simple as that. Uh, I have to look good doing so. And you know, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great night. We have Connor coming out with me. Uh, he's going to carry the tricolor. And I asked him at an event in Belfast, and he says it would be an honour. So we've been in touch, and he, he arrives in, I think, tomorrow or Friday. Uh, and you know, I have to have him, the, one of the biggest stars, probably the biggest star in combat sports at the minute, uh, carrying the tricolor for me. And he's a national hero also. So, you know, uh, it's a complete honour. I'm very grateful. Uh, I want to thank Top Rank and Matthew Macklin and, and MTK Global, my, my management team. For making this opportunity uh, possible for me. You know, I'm probably rambling on a bit and talking too fast here, but at the same time, it's my, my first time standing in front of a, a big stage and before my professional debut. So you know, I'm looking forward to Friday night. I hope you all tune in. I hope you're all there because it's going to be a serious atmosphere, a uh, big, big event ahead. And you know, what lies ahead for the future, I'm, I'm ready to become a three bit world champion. Uh, I truly believe I will, and I will be Ireland's greatest ever fighter. And it starts off Friday night with me. Uh, Bar. Thank you. Thank you, Mick. Just uh, a couple of notes. Tomorrow, uh, we'll be making an announcement about signing uh, yet another of these terrific young fighters. Uh, this man, a gold medal winner in the Rio Olympics. I promised uh, his management that I would hold the announcement until tomorrow, but it will be made tomorrow. Uh, as you can see, we at Top Rank have signed the best young fighters in the world, uh, and we're going to be showcasing them in the months and years to come, and it will be a terrific ride for everybody. The weigh-in tomorrow will be uh, let me see. Uh, will be here. Yes. Here at what time? New report two o'clock on the scale. Report two o'clock. No report to noon. Report Fighters at noon. And on the scale too. Be on the scale at two o'clock, and the card starts here on Friday night. What time? Seven. Seven p.m. And it's going to be. Everybody coming should come for all the fights. Really, it's a terrific card of seven fights, and uh, everyone, uh, every fight uh, is uh, significant. So I want to thank you all for coming. I want to thank the beautiful ladies, the <laughs> top-ranked knockouts. Uh, you know, as cold as it is outside, they warm up the building. <laughs> It's true. An old guy like me can say it. Young guys should. Right. Thank you all for coming. We're going to pose the fight.